Hello, today my presentation is on tier in functional mitral regurgitation step by step. Here are my disclosures. So I'm going to be talking about the mitral clip G4 system, which has four different clip sizes to customize mitral valve repair. And you can see that the principles of transcaptor edge to edge repair or tier in FMR is that you want to achieve optimal leaflet co-optation. You also want to optimize MR reduction. As a surgeon, I believe two plus residual MR is no longer good enough unless anatomically you're limited to achieve only a two plus reduction. And then finally, we want to achieve a promote indirect annuloplasty through the tier mechanism. Now, how do you select the clips in secondary MR? Well, first of all, if your leaflets are long enough over uh, nine millimeter or longer, I would use the XT, whether it's W or XT depends on the jet width. And otherwise I would use the NT or NTW. If the annular and AP dimensions are small, less than 30 millimeters, for example, I would also consider using the NTW or NT to avoid annular puckering and more MR on either side of the clip. I usually use an XTW or NTW to start. Often one clip is sufficient to reduce the MR to one plus or better. However, in a broad jet situation, you might need to have a two clip strategy. And so what we've lately learned is that an XTW XT or NTW NT combination may minimize the jet between the two clips uh, because now you can put the second clip, the XT or the NT more closely to the XTW or NTW versus if you put a second XTW or NTW uh, instead. Now, how do you decide the clipping order? So what I would suggest is that you start with either commissures if they're jet there and then work towards the center. Because if you clip the center first, then you reduce the orifice, the double orifice, and making the second clip uh, with the next pathology more difficult to go from the left atrium to ventricle. Now, what are the key screening TEBUs for mitral clip tear? I would say the first, you start by a bicommissural explain uh, to the LBOT, which is a grasping view with or without color. And you do a sweep from lateral to medial, or vice versa, to interrogate the leaflet anatomy pathology, the leaflet length, jet location and width, and target grasping location. The next view, I would say, is a 3D on FOSS, which is the commissures you need to position them at 10 and 12 o'clock with and without color to look at potentially the pathology and of course during the procedure for clip orientation. And finally, you need to do a bicable explain to a reverse aortic valve short axis or reverse four chamber view to sweep superiorly to the, from the SBC down inferiorly to the fossa and also explain view which will show anterior versus posterior part of the septum to identify your optimal puncture spot. So for transeptal access, this final bullet point in terms of TE view is critical. So if you are limited on time and skills, these are the only views you really need for successful transcatheter edge-to-edge -edge repair procedure. So let me show you a case here. It's a 70-year-old female, EF slightly reduced at 45%, applied CLTD for cardiomyopathy, morbid obesity, uh, and certainly uh, has some disability. Even though it's a low STS score for surgical repair, the patient was deemed by a heart team to be high risk for surgery. And the etiology is actually a little bit mixed. I want to show you two different scenarios here. It's a mixed uh, A2 flail, but also obviously patient has reduced ejection fraction. So here's the first key view. I want to show you the left side here. Uh, with the bicommissure, we will typically put the apex at six o'clock. And you can see that's medial and lateral and anterior posterior. And you can look at the anatomy and you can see where the jet is located. Next, you can see that we do a sweep. So you can see the medial side on the left side with a cursor is actually located on the medial aspect of the valve and you sweep in the middle and then you sweep lateral and you do it with and without color. So the color will tell you where the jet location is and the width of the jet. And then without color, it'll show you the actual pathology where you're trying to grasp. So in this case, you can see there's a flail A2 here, but also the ventricle is dilated. Now we also measure the leaflets that you're trying to grasp. The important reason is that when you close the clip, you want to be able to see the residual leaflet length and you subtract the two to be able to see how much leaflet is inserted into the clip. So there you can see the posterior leaflet being measured around one centimeter. And you can see that the anterior leaflet up to the hinge point here where the secondary cord is inserted is a little over one centimeter. So you can see clearly here, the XTW would be the preferred choice. 
Now the 3D on force echo here, you can see, you can see it draw a virtual clock face and you can see where the common shoes are at 10 and two o'clock. That way you can be consistent with your echo imager and your implanter to optimize your language exchange in terms of where the clip is optimally oriented. In this case, I would say I would do it at 12 and six right in the middle. Now, transceptor is very important for bicable. Explain the reverse ball chamber view. You can see that here, the tenting of this particular uh, scenario. You can see that with the bicable, SVC, right atrial junction, and then this is the fossa. And so you sweep superiorly down to the fossa to track your transeptal needle. And you can see that here, this is a safe cross system of a balloon tip. And you can see that here, cursor is on a tenting spot, not anything else but the tenting spot. So you know exactly where it's tenting, how posterior you are. You need to see that in both views. And of course, you can see that that is how you sweep here. Now, then you look at the aortic valve short axis and then the four chamber view, the aortic valve short axis you see here is so that where you tend how posterior you are. And then your four chamber view measures the height from the tenting, draw a perpendicular line, and then down to the mitral annulus where your grasping uh, location is. So here's the same view as I want to show you. You can see the puncturing occur in two views. This is superior inferior, and this is anterior posterior. And on floral is also important because you can see this is REO projection where you actually I superimposed the tenting area with a fossa illustrated here. And you can see the mitral analysis is roughly here because you can see the coronary sinus lead. And you can see the wire goes straight to the left upper pulmonary vein. And if you see the curve a little bit differently, the left atrial appendage is here. And sometimes the wire may end up in the left atrial appendage. Not the end of the world, but you wanna make sure you don't push too hard and risk perforation. So the puncture site, when you do an aerial projection with typically towards the right side of the spine, you can see that here with the orange dashed line. Uh, if you go, towards the center of the spine, then you're going more posterior as you see the directionality here. And then you can see that we advanced the pre-shape wire to the left pulmonary vein. Here's how it looks. You can see the guy now with the dilator coming across to the septum. You can see the serrated uh, contour on echo. And then now you can see the guy well into the left atrium. It's okay, you don't need to retract it because what I show you next here is that while you advance the clip out of the guy, you can actually retract the guy and the stabilizer at the same time to facilitate your straddling. And you can see that you will use two views to put the cursor on the tip of the guide to know exactly where you are. And you can see that this fluoroscopic image here, as the guy exits the, the clip exits the guy, you can see that you retract it backward, as I've shown here on floral, so you can do your straddle. So once you straddle, you can clearly steer down with M and post your guide talk pretty standard fashion. We do it in the same aerial projection. And then once you can see that here with bicomishore sure explain uh, going missing the crewman and ridge, make sure you're not stuck in the appendage. The clip now goes towards the valve. You want to be perpendicular, and you can see making sure you're not too posterior on your uh, explain view as you come down and steer down onto the valve. Now you can see that here on floral, essentially what you're doing, you're aiming posterior guide torque and you're trying to land the clip in this way. And after that, you basically would jiggle jiggle to take the parallax out of the clip and also to uh, loosen the tension in the system. So of course you do your gripper check on the bicomer show. Explain me, this is the posterior gripper. You can see that here, this is the anterior gripper. You can do that on the echo. And then of course, this is the next important view. After you do that, we go immediately to the 3D. On falls, you can see the now the common show uh, in the 10 and two o'clock to standardize our references points. And you can see this clip is at the 12, six orientation right above the jet. So this is good to go. And so we are now ready to go into the ventricle. However, on floral, you need to also check the orientation. So you can see that here, as you go in from the LA to LB, you wanna maintain this trajectory in the green. You wanna maintain that, see, this is above the rib here. You don't wanna go either side lateral dive or medial dive. And if that happens, you want to undo a little bit of amp or, over, uh, or add a little amp depending on which direction. But also you wanna make sure the clip does not spin the parallax is removed. You can see that here because on 3D on force on echo, you already uh, know that you're the optimal orientation. So on floral, because it's higher resolution, you can then make sure that there's not spun and that has been described in the Sky ebook as well. Just to give you another perspective here, this is the annular plane, for example. This is straight down perpendicular to the annular plane. You don't want a medial or lateral dive. 
And you can see that here, anterior posterior on the X-plane grasping view, you want to go along the area of the grasping. You don't want to have anterior dive or posterior dive. So here's how you go in. You can see that here it's nicely tangential. This is coaxial and perpendicular to the uh, annular plane. This is coaxial and tangential to the grasping. And you can watch for we can in, you can see that here just to show you how mathematically the relationship will work. Now, when you come up the grass, it's also important not to rotate the clip. So when you come up, make sure there's no parallax on the clip and the same flow scalping projection. It's very important. So when you come up here, slowly lower growth grippers. You don't, the image of you will see you when you drop the grippers. So take your time and lower it so you can real time and record it. So you can see how much leaf is inserted. You can see the leaflet tips are well west into the groove of the clip. So you can clearly see that this is a nice grass. And if you have any doubt, you can certainly optimize uh, and potentially, especially when you close the clip and give back tension, you want to make sure you have not lost any leaflet insertion. Of course, a 3D uh, force is very important to confirm the tissue bridge. And of course, you want to make sure there's uh, adequate MR reduction. You check the mitral valve gradient. You check the pulmonary vein flow. And then once you are happy and you want to release, when you watch the pin as it comes out on floral and echo to make sure you did not injure any adjacent structure, we typically actually undo the plus knob. You have any plus knob uh, to reduce the tension of the guy, and then you just retract the pin all the way to the guy. Then you can undo all the M. It's not necessary to undo the M uh, right away, and you can actually risk swinging out laterally and injure the left atrium. So here's the... Uh, pin release, and then you can see the final result. Uh, mild MR, certainly see very stable on 3D and on 2D. This is the final tissue bridge. And of course, this is the fluoroscopic projection. This is the ASD assessment. We routinely do an ASD to measure the sizes. And the procedure time, I would say, if you do this consistently, 10 minutes and done from guide insertion to removal, patient had immediate improvement in symptoms and home next day on optimal medical therapy. This is a discharge echo. You can see you do multiple views, personal long axis, apical short axis, four chamber uh, and reverse four to five chamber, uh, three chamber. You can see that it's a nice MR reduction, actually, in fact, probably trivial to uh, MR here on day one. So in summary, I would say mitral clip tear on FMR can be done safely and efficiently with excellent MR reduction in SUHO, and this is case example. And the procedure is TE guided, but also for assessed and it's now highly standardized, and you see what we've accomplished here. The key, though, is start with a standardized T imaging protocol in terms of screening and acquisition so that you do the same thing during the procedure, and you have procedural steps uh, with meticulous fluoroscopic guidance and assistance. Both the image and implant need to see both the TE and floral view at all times, and the pitfalls include clip mile rotation during LV entry and grasping, and that's how you can rotate the clip and spin and lead to more amount of release. Or if you have inadequate leaflet insertion during clip closure and failure to optimize. So I'd like to do, thank you very much for your attention and the invitation.